What part of nature makes me feel vulnerable? Stormy days when the rain falls like rhinestones from the sky. Each drop of water trickles down, racing one another on the window pane. Those small crystal orbs reveal my reflection with a slight distortion due to its spherical shape. As I stand outside, I can feel my clothes stick to my body from the downpour. The drops fall onto my skin one after another. Standing in the rain feels as though my burdens are being washed away. I run to the tree and hook it and try not to think of anything. And once it's hooked, I yell, go ahead. And me yelling kind of scared me. I got scared because I exposed myself and made my presence clear to everything in the woods. As we start to pull the log out, I'm all alone in the woods away from the road and I start to feel super scared. I feel like I'm about to be attacked and I run to the road quickly. When I'm running, I feel like there's someone following me and I look back. The way everything works together in harmony. Working into cycles that never fade. Everything in nature has a job and takes part in nature's everlasting cycles. Even from the smallest form of life to the largest mountaintop, it has a purpose to fill. The real beauty comes from the cosmos. It's the best part. Stardust floating through space and surrounding stars and reflecting pinks and blues that just captivate you, surrounding you in its bright of warmth and color. Everywhere you look, it surrounds you, engulfing you, but you can't help but feel its cold emptiness of infinity, never-ending emptiness that somehow looks full of stars and planets. You can't help but feel so small in the grand scheme of it all. It feels like time slowed down so much, so I could make the shot. As I'm about to shoot, the whole world goes quiet, and all you can hear is the needles falling off the trees. You take your last breath, and fire. For a short moment, all you see is a flash of the muzzle, and all you feel is the kick of the gun, which feels like a punch in the shoulder. The sound at first was quiet, but it just kept getting louder and louder. At this point, I was already scared half to death. Then I did what any curious kid would do. I unzipped the tent so I could see outside. Once the tent was fully unzipped, I took a peek. The smoldering fire provided just enough light to reveal only two deer eating some trash. People tread paths through land and waters once owned by nature. When left on watch, people disrupt the peace between nature and its animals. But isn't it in our nature to destroy and conquer anything we see fit? Humans persist as the judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to nature's fate. There is a line between observing nature and destroying it. I am as most are, which is doing what is in our nature. Driving in the mountains with my family is something I really enjoy doing. I like the sights of a forest with trees so thick that it lays a shadow on the road, like a building standing over a street. After driving through a road... Inside the dense forest, we found the steep hill we were looking for. At the top, there was a view of the dry plains around us. We knew we had some time before our grandparents got here, so we got back in Damon's car and went to Saddle Mountain Road. Hanging out the window, I could feel the wind breaking through my sweater, making me cold, but it gave me a sense of freedom that hasn't rushed through me in years. Shifting up to fifth, music in my ears and wind in my face, I lost all sense of responsibility. Letting a screaming whoop escape my lungs, I leaned back farther and looked up to the sky, admiring the beauty and vast abyss. Finally, it became too hard to breathe. My eyes burned so much that I slipped back into the truck. The freedom I felt that night lost in nature was a feeling I will never forget and only ever find again in the woods. I do like hiking a little bit, like nothing too hard, just hiking something simple and enjoying it. For example, I would choose a well-used trail through tall pine trees by low lakes surrounded by trees. I prefer to hike with a group of noisy friends or family. From a high place, we can hear people laughing and splashing on the shores of the lake. 
As the night goes on, it forces the sun down, creating a canvas full of bright, warming colors shining into your eyes. Clear nights come often, the sky booming in vibrant, bold colors. The vibrant colors crushing through the screen of their cell phone, turning the brightness all the way down, and they still break through the screen, blinding their eyes. Covering them with toasty colors, causing some of the cool colors to turn warm. Night swimming, bonfires, camping, and lastly, hanging out with your friends and becoming closer and closer as the days go on. The sun sets the summer nights and days away, but never can set the memories that fill your head. A cool breeze brushed the valley as we trekked towards the mountains which overlook civilization below, cradled by a sweater of luscious flowers and spring grass. Walking past trees of green that have been waiting to sprout their flowers as someone who has held a burning secret too long and finally lets go of the pain. From a distance, town lights shine and twinkle like a small galaxy in a pond where man has only moved centimeters from the edge. Fog thick as smoke floated in like huge Caribbean waves against a speck-like ship in a vast ocean prairie. Moving along on my path of stone and earth, imagining the wonders of the wilderness's quiet but extravagant shine of intriguing artistry. The river was rushing. I stepped in with no waders, only wearing tennis shoes. The water rushed through my feet and legs, sending chills down my spine. I gooped my small nymph that was well used, knowing that I should probably be using a wet fly, but I was too lazy to tie on a new fly. The scenery outside passed by quickly. From the window, it looked like we sped down the road, but when I looked to the front of the bus, the scenery looked like we were gradually driving down the road. The trees were passing by like a flash. All I see is a dark green color. The painted lines on the road sped by. One of my favorite memories is hunting with my grandpa. I remember killing my first buck. I remember my grandpa making me eat the heart, and the heart was really hard. It kind of reminded me of dried up bubble gum for some reason. It was really hard to chew. Feeling the cold metal trigger against my finger, everything around me goes silent besides my heartbeat which I can hear course throughout my body. The deer runs away, waving its white bushy tail back and forth, as if it was waving goodbye, all because of the orange plump robin singing a song. A thunderstorm hits, turning the dirt into thick, dense mud. Seconds feel like minutes waiting for the storm to pass by. The sun peeks out from behind the clouds. Ears ring from a yellow blast. I drive off into the yellow-orange sunset to the place I call home. We've all laid in the grass at some point in our lives to look up at the blue sky as the white clouds crossed our eyesight. One day when looking up, my brother pointed out a cloud that almost looked like a horse. Not long after seeing the cloud, we watched a shadow slowly glide across the mountainsides. As the day was coming to an end, a storm came by, and as the storm started to go away, it only left a light sprinkle of water falling down, along with a small rainbow to put a smile on our faces. The trees to the entrance of the mystical forest stood there like giants. All the limbs were visible, and I could see every twist and turn in the bark of the giant old trees. Every day, I would lean against the trees. I got the sudden impulsive urge to go into the trees. The sun is setting, revealing the most vibrant pinks and purples of a summer Montana evening. The ground sparkled from the thousands of dew droplets with the grass a vibrant but calm shade of absolute green. The early mist of the clouds hung over the mountains with the pure white snow illuminated by the sun. The warmth of the morning sun on my back made the blood within my body pulsate through my veins almost as if it was going to burst out of me. All the birds dipping and diving, causing a hurricane of old dandelions with the chirping adding to the tranquility of this already inspiring place. Sunsets are alluring. The vibrant colors fade into the periwinkle sky. The cold concrete sidewalk is chilled under my feet, with my dog by my side. The vibrant colors reflect on the mountains, giving them a golden glow. The day finally turns into night. The temperature drops as the bright stars pop out one by one. The duck Dark colors of the night sky dominates the bright ones.
Some parts of the riverbank are high enough to keep the other land dry, but at other points where its banks are not high enough to contain it, water oozes over. I slide off my hot shoes and socks and leave them on the log as I begin carefully stepping through the strongest current. I take mindful steps around the shrubs that could poke my feet and into the soft floating grass. Once my feet are submerged, the grass weaves its way around my toes as if they don't want to let me move on. And for a second I stay and enjoy their company, but I have more to see, so I say farewell. My eye picks small purple flowers with small thorns coming out of the sides as if they never wanted to be plucked from Mother Nature. Red, yellow, and blue ribbons hung from the branch of the tree of my childhood. The sun was out, just barely above the hill, peeking through the tall trees from above. I took my time walking through the grass that reached my ankles, still damp from the storm from the night before. A cold breeze from the wind charges through the leaves surrounded by a group of trees. You can hear them whistle a tune, hitting every branch ever so softly. I walked out and placed myself in their home, hoping to see a woodpecker or something exciting, rarely seen from the human eye. There's different pieces of life all around me trying to burst alive as the seasons change. There can almost be a meadow off in the distance full of dandelions and the puffy clouds of weeds we used to blow on to make all our wishes come true. There's little patches of dead bushes around me, sticking, poking, and gray coming out of the ground. Some life is peeking and pushing through the decay. When I'm out in nature, I could be doing so many different things. I could be hunting, fishing, hiking, or even working. Honestly, I love doing any of these activities because it's outdoors and in the woods. It's just so calm and peaceful when I'm out there. It's away from all the distractions like phones and sometimes other people. The quietness just clears my mind from my distractions and problems I have to deal with when I'm at home or school. We drive until the dust settles and the gravel turns to dark, sticky mud. A draft of cool air blows in through the open windows and the blasting sound of Charlie Daniels and George Strait fill the cap. In the rear view mirror, I can see Sid's silky asphalt black ears flapping in the wind I have created. Towering pine trees and short shrubs fly by, the sky a perfect shade of blue. It is much better to enjoy nature with others rather than by yourself. Once we went out and stopped, we saw a deer that was up ahead of us. It was near us, but it didn't make a sound. As soon as we came up on it, as soon as we walked closer, it moved its head, stared at us, and leaped away. The deer looked like a female with no horns. It had a sleek brown fur. It was a great thing to experience with others.